And I absolutely 100% know that I am a stronger, better person for living with Adam being an addict. I'm Bibba and this is Adam. We live on the cliffs of Cornwall in the UK. We love to travel with our two children, Tamani and Pablo. Welcome to our world. Like and subscribe for the ups and downs of real life. Everything is falling. When you going to say good morning? Morning. Um, so today we are going to talk about the question, why me? You ask yourself that every day, don't you? Yes, Adam. <laughs> really interesting video that I watched. Um, and it reminded me how much I used to ask, why me? Mm. When, when Adam was drinking um, and when we were going through it and I was like, why? What, why, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. So, you know, why do I, why do I deserve this? Why is, you know, and it was trying to, at that time I was trying to start believing and getting in touch with my higher power or the universe or God or whatever, you know, whoever it is, whoever, whoever you call it, whatever you call it, um, trying to get in touch with that and thinking, well, if there is this God who's looking after me, then why have they given me this? Why, why have they made Adam an alcoholic, for example? Why is it happening to me? Um, but I've, I've also come up, I said, I was going to say come up against it, but it's kind of become evident this week with um i've had conversations with people who are either in active addiction or almost in recovery and they're like you know why and it's the same stuff it's like poor me why me you know how how can i get if i how can i get well because it will mean living the rest of my life without a drink oh why me why have i t you know it's it is it's i think it's a universal it kind of question for both the addict and the partner the parents the family the kids yeah it's just life and you know we're not the only ones who think it just because we're in recovery but it's like whenever something bad happens then you ask the question why me um and and for it's that as soon as you ask why me you go kind of go into that self-pity mode which is um, very much. I know all about that. <laughs> Adam, Adam is the self pity king. Um, not at the moment. Not now. Not at the moment. No. But oh, when, not at the moment. When he was in, when he's in active drinking, that is what. That's what addicts do. They think they are constantly thinking, "Why me? My life is so bad." You know. Well, not just that. I just like it, well, when I'm active, I'm riddled with. Uh, self-pity low self-esteem no self-worth guilt shame it's all the negative feelings and emotions not one morning did i wake up after drinking a liter of vodka the night before and think yay i'm happy to be alive today <laughs> well i don't know i don't think anyone would think that but you know it is a question that we ask ourselves um and it's it all it is all about self-pity however there is a way to turn it around and um from i think we need need to be careful when we talk about this not to point fingers and say oh you're full of self pity we're not saying that that's what we no 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 but when you're asking yourself why me yeah yeah essentially it's, that's it's, what you're yeah yeah, yeah. you're in self so it's yes, about you yes right? so it's not about the world or the universe or yeah if something if something bad happens or you something you perceive as bad is happening to you then you automatically think why me and then you're automatically going why me it's all about me um like adam says it's it's self and we've got to try and not necessarily think like that because there is another way to think that will that it, that will not keep you in that self place. Does so it's about sense? mindset. It's about mindset. So um, basically, how I mean, how how have you turned it round now? How have you turned that why me, poor me around? Well, in two ways. So I've stopped drinking. Yeah. And straight away, I don't. That's got rid of most of the why means. 
but also uh, it's for me as as an addict it's about acceptance so it's about accepting that this is i have choice so i'm never going to be able to drink safely so and i can I, I don't know how long i'm going to live for i don't know how long you'll be graced with my presence for <laughs> But the, the fact is that it's either I can either live in why me or I can think, right, it's, it's just the what this is just me. Like this is the way I, I can be or I can choose not to think like that. So was there anything whilst you were drinking that you could have switched your mindset despite your drinking? Could you have turned it or was the drink? Did the drinking just completely cloud everything? No, for, I think when I was drinking, I would latch on to things that would allow me to feel self-pity. So like family bereavements, um, you know, uh, lack of work at times, maybe the car breaking down, the dog crapping on the front room floor. <laughs> but that's the thing. I would latch on to anything to allow myself to feel to uh, to give myself permission to be, oh, why poor me? Why me? I create circuit situations with you where we would argue and stuff like that, and I'd be like, right. Okay. So I, it was. It's. I don't know. For me, I, and I can't speak for every addict no. or alcoholic, but for me, it was just a case of like, right, Ad, you've got to grow up a little bit here, and you know, yeah. stop, stop blaming the world for the things that I'm causing in it yeah so my behaviors i can't i haven't caused the fact that i'm an alcoholic but i do i have absolute control over my behaviors and my actions yeah actions are a big one so so for me from my position um i used to think why me you know what is it what is it that i've done to deserve this um and the way the main thing that i've that I've done to switch my mindset around it is to turn the question around and think, so this is, I, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. Um, and things now you are now, but even then I believe that I believe. So that is that part of your, why me you're like, right, I've been bad. So therefore <clears throat> or I haven't, uh, to re is it a, punishment thing is it a self no, it was a self-pity i was in self-pity mode the same as you were when you like years ago when you were in you know not necessarily this act this relapse oh no i still many years before before adam found recovery i was definitely in a poor me but going through the process of my own recovery and looking at myself you start to realize that um actually it's if you can flip that question around and think things happen to things don't happen to you they happen for you so if i think about this like what how can i what lesson can i learn from this now like adam says it's easy it's kind of easy for me to say this now um but because at, at the time i wasn't i didn't have this mindset but all i can do is you know give you talk about how, what's changed for me so in the hope that you know you can take some of it and and help you know it might help your own mindset with it so um i look at what lessons can i learn so this relapse particularly i have been very conscious of of saying to myself so this is happening why is it happening to me what is it what is the lesson that i can learn so i'm still asking myself why me but in a flipping it around and going okay what can i get from this what can i learn from it what can i use to take me forward but you you've also this time you've detached yes more from i know we've spoken about this before but you've detached from the addict no? yeah well that's so it's I mean, not that's going to be another whole yeah, life so we'll maybe we'll do detachment next week um because that is a big thing uh that's that is really difficult to do and people can't sometimes find it difficult to do that because you think oh i love them but how so how do i detach from them so it's a we'll come we'll do that one next week maybe <laughs> um so yeah for me it's turning it around and in this 
video I watched yesterday was all about how can you turn a oh what did what word did he use? I can't remember what it was now. Uh anyway, turn something turn a bad situation into something like good. a life event or yeah. a, like something um so it's so it's what can you learn from it? How can I use this to to make myself better? But also it's understanding when you've got that understanding of God or the universe or your higher power, or whatever it might be. Um, it's realizing that you've been given this opportunity for a reason. Yeah, and I like listening. I was listening while you were watching it, and he, and he talked to, and he was talking about like you know when you go why me, it was like well why not? Mm. Why not you? Yeah. And actually to to assess the situation or the feelings and be like, actually, what are my how what are my strengths that will allow me to deal with this, push through or flourish or like turn all the negatives into a positive. Yeah. And it's and it's you know, you've been given you believing that you have been given this to make yourself better. To learn something. To learn something, to make yourself a better person. And I absolutely 100% know that I am a stronger, better person for living with Adam being an addict. Absolutely 100%. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done the searching that I needed to do, the, the looking at these questions, you know, why me? Looking at all the, all the stuff that comes with the self-development in, that comes in recovery, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done nearly as much as I have without going through that process of living with an addict. Um, You've become more resilient. I have become more resilient. I've become and it's not just it's not just in terms of living with an addict, it's in terms of life. I'm able to not only am I able to t to detach from Adam's behavior or realize like we were talking last week, I can't control Adam's behavior. I can't control anything about Adam. That's also the same for me at work or with my children. Or with your family, codependency. With the, with the family, you know, anything. It, it, it goes through your entire life. So yes, it helps you to deal with your- That was, that was a big thing for me in my drinking was not being able to control you, the kids, mm. uh, your parents, my parents, uh, that. You know the active alcoholic in me, Uncle Olive. Olive, <laughs> uh, Olive, um, wants to control everything and everyone. Yeah. And it's a painful place to be. And so, and, and so do we as partners. Yeah, yeah. So we're both like this. Yeah, we're just kind just, of at each other. Yeah. You or just we were. Battle against each other because you're both trying to get control of each other, but it's learning to let go, and that has in itself has given me a huge lesson in life. To, to be able to live a far happier life, you know, without having to control everybody. It's exhausting having to control everybody. You still at me a little bit when it comes well, to loading the dishwasher and things like that. You, let's not go there. So, um, so back to the question, why me? So <clears throat> if you can, if you can turn it around and try to look at the lessons from it and believe me, I know how difficult that can be when you're, when you're living with active addiction, when you're um, in that place that is so painful to watch and, you know, your, your, uh, your loved one, your addict, whoever that might be, is in a really difficult place. Um, but if you can turn it and think, what are the lessons? And you will only be given these lessons. You will only be given these... Um, you won't be session, given more than you can than what handle. you can cope with. So you... You've got to believe in yourself that you have been given this opportunity for a reason and you are strong enough to deal with it because, you know, even if it's and it should be just one day at a time, take one day at a time to get through each day. And each day is a stepping stone to becoming that stronger person that you that your higher power or God or whoever you believe has. That's your path. That's what they've got in store for you, and that is okay. Trust that process. Just go with it one day at a time, and you will get stronger. You're not in camera, by the way. Doesn't like not being in camera. <laughs> um, when I when I was when I was drinking, I was just thinking then while you were chatting, I get a lot of time to 
think while you're talking. Because you don't listen. <laughs> um, I was felt like a child, really, in that I feel sorry for myself. I'd want attention from you, even if it was bad attention. Mm. So shouting, telling me what to do, all of that kind of stuff. When you stop doing that, it's like, I was like, right, what now? What do I do now? Mm. And eventually I, w I got to that point where I was like, right. And then especially when you were going to kick me out, I'm like, right, so she's not playing any games anymore. Um, I'm not getting a reaction. No. Not that I did it for a reaction. Well, you did because a reaction is attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But my, I'm, no. But the main thing was is that I'm an alky and an addict. Like I'm not, you know. Otherwise, like I could be a perfectly normal person. I'm just doing something to piss you off, like, yeah. which I do daily now anyway. But not <laughs> related to. Um, but then for me, that helped me to mm. make that decision to be like, right, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. This is boring. I'm not getting. It doesn't do the same stuff for me as it did years ago. It's like yeah. and like I and then get to a point where you can't I couldn't live with the drinking and I couldn't live without it. But it was like, right, okay, I'm just gonna fucking make a sorry, didn't mean swear. Right. I'm just gonna make a decision and stop feeling sorry for myself. And that's also what I got from going to where, you know, going where I go every evening. It's like there is no room for self pity. Mm. It's like you know, get over it, start doing something about it. Yeah. You know what the problem is, you know what the issues are, you know. Yeah, and you know, on that, it's not, none of this is going to go away unless you, if, unless, you, all you can do is take action yourself. So, you know, I was going to say, all you can, it's only going to go away if both of you take action. However, you can't control what the other person is doing. They have to decide that for themselves. But if you can, <clears throat> if you can choose to take that action, to switch that switch your mindset in terms of not not feeling sorry for yourself turning it turning an opportunity turning it into an opportunity to learn to to you know learn more about yourself and switch that question around and change your mindset then inadvertently that helps the other person but it also helps you i, th I think that the whole process can be quite a nourishing process for both you as the partner yeah and me as the addict I remember talking to a friend um, years and years ago. We went for a walk. This was when um, I can't remember exactly what point it was, but I know that you were you were either in very early recovery last time or you were still in active addiction. And mm. but I was going to um, Al-Anon and I was learning all this all this stuff about it, and I was doing lots of reading and learning about it. And I remember saying to my friend, "I'm I'm so grateful that." this is happening to me because I would never have learned all this stuff. It was so eye opening to me, all the stuff that I was learning um, that I'm really grateful. And she just looked at me really confused as if to say, why would you want this? Why do you, you know, you know, cause I was kind of saying, I'm so grateful to Adam for being an alcoholic. And she was like, what, why would you be grateful for that? You've just been through absolute hell. And it's like, well, yeah, I have, but, I wouldn't have got to this point if I hadn't have done that. So it makes you stronger and it's turning that again, turning the mindset around. Anyway. Your hands are very active today. They are. Do I need to start doing that? No. Um, anyway, that's <clears throat> us for today. Sure. Um, yep. Yeah. Do you want to talk about anything else? No, do you? Yeah, I'm month sober this week. Oh. Yes, right. when I said to him this morning, what, so what should we talk about no, today? No, 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 we don't need to go there. No. Oh, do we not? It's not all about me, Bibs, all the time. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yes, Adam is a month sober. He's over a month sober. I am over a month sober. What, uh, I don't know, like a few days over. Yeah. But I did good. get a bit flat yesterday, didn't we? I did. We had a bit of a rough afternoon. We had a bit of an argument yesterday. But we got through it. We talked about it. We got through it. Yeah, I, you know, you apologised and then we moved on. <laughs> not sure that was the case, but um, but it, you know, it's not always plain sailing, is it? Like, no, even recovery. And, and like you know, we don't like the solutions don't come straight away. No. no, and again, that's another subject we can talk about is willingness to to accept 
that when you're in the wrong. That... Yeah. Well, what I was going to say was early recovery, and is... you can, you can, you can. I longed for him to be back in recovery. And there are times now you're like, oh God's sake. Well, no, it's just it. You long for that time of the dream relationship that you that you know that you've always wanted back again. And then they get it and you think, oh, what's going to fix it is, ah, he needs to be in recovery. He gets into recovery and it's still not that dream relationship. And you think, oh, my God, what's going on? But we, like, I, I know we'll talk about this again, maybe in depth. But like for a long time, I kind of felt like I held you prisoner while I was drinking and like, hounded you for affection and this and that. And it's like now I see it as now I'm in recovery. I'll just allow you to have a bit of a holiday from me. <laughs> and to leave you alone and then yeah. yesterday you were like well why are you not showing me affection well it's why are you not it's not showing affection it was just spending attention time because you're yeah. like the dog like the puppy so give me attention <laughs> no it wasn't <laughs> oh dear oh, anyway really? it's a, it's never quite plain sailing but it is worth it in the end there's so, willingness to put in the effort yeah and no relationship is it, comes easy no. so you know you've got to put work into any relationship that you have so anyway hope you found that helpful see you all soon bye, bye.